everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be going over how to view dailies inside of Premiere Pro. Now, first of all, you might be asking yourself, or you might already know what they are, but what, what are dailies? When you're doing a film production, a movie production, the dailies are the all the individual setups and all the individual takes that you shot for that day. If you're on a shoot that's going to be lasting several days, several weeks, several months, the director and director of photography will traditionally go to a screening room at the end of the day and they will bring all the clips that they shot from that day and they will view them on a big screen to make sure that they got everything that they need for the scenes that were shot that day. So if you're using Premiere Pro to view your dailies, I'm going to show you kind of a, a nice way to use it. Sometimes people will open up a folder where they've got all their clips and all they'll do is just sit there and double click on them and basically just load them into the source monitor and say, here, watch it within Premiere Pro. I'm going to show you a better way to do this that was a little bit more convenient and makes it so you can watch all your dailies in order from the beginning of the shoot to the end of the shoot. And you can also view them uh, full screen as well, rather than looking at it in the software like we're looking at here. So these are all the files that were shot on a day. So if we're going to be taking these and viewing them, well, first of all, um, one thing that's been done here is an assistant editor has taken all these files. Since this was a film that was shot where the camera shot the footage and then the sound apart recorded the audio separately, that's called using sync sound. These files have been synced together by an assistant editor uh, to prepare them for viewing. And that's what these files are right here. These film strips represent the video clip and then this audio waveform represents the audio that was shot and these have been synced together. I, I do have an episode on how to do that under my Adobe Premiere Pro 2024 tutorial playlist episode 21. I do have a tutorial on syncing and merging audio and video files. So with all these files synced, I've got scene one synced here. I'm going to just grab basically all these files. Well, first of all, we can create a timeline. I don't have a timeline created for viewing dailies yet. I'm just going to grab one of these files and drag it and drop it into my timeline here. That's generated a timeline. I'm going to select that clip and delete it. And we can go up here and rename this timeline to scene one dailies. And there's my timeline here down at the bottom. So now that I've got this empty timeline here, I can grab all the footage that I have for that day. I'm going to select the top one right here. I'm arranging by name, by the way, with this arrow pointing up, which is in alphanumerical order. And then I'm going to hold down shift and move down. And I'm going to click on the bottom one and that will select everything in between. So I've got all my files selected now. Now I can drag these files down into my timeline. And you'll notice I've got a lot of gaps in here. And that's because some of these clips have in and out points on them. So they're just dropping the in and out points into. If I just want to see the full footage without the in and out points, I'm going to undo that command Z or control Z on a PC to undo that. And then I'm going to go into my project window here, make sure that my project project window is selected. I've got all these clips selected in my project window and I'm going to hold down option and hit X and that will clear. I just did that and that cleared all the in and out points on here. If you're on a PC, that would be control shift X. So yeah, I don't know why those are so different between the Mac and PC, but with the PC it's control shift X and with the Macintosh, it is option X. So now I can grab, I'm going to grab the first one. It'll put it in the order that I grabbed this. So I'm going to grab this first one right here and drag it down, grab that icon, drag it down in the timeline and put it right here in uh, v video track one and audio track one. So it's all kind of pulled together here and I'm going to let go. And now all my dailies are inside the timeline here. So now we're also ready to start viewing these things. I do like to increase my track height so I can see the thumbnails a little bit better. While I'm in my timeline here, I have that highlighted in, in blue there. I'm going to hit shift plus and it will increase the track height to a standard uh, height. Before we go full screen, I'm going to show you a few navigation features here just to navigate through the footage because once we go full screen, which is actually control tilde and control tilde, it's not command tilde on a, on a Mac. It is both on a PC and Mac. It is control tilde and this will go full screen and you'll be able to see your image full screen. Now I can press the space bar to play this back. Okay, clear and now we can start watching our dailies here. I'm going to show you some navigation features before we go full screen. It's good to have these uh, navigation uh, shortcuts down so you can control the media a little easier here. So I'm not showing full screen, but I'm going to, I'm going to demonstrate this in full screen right now. I want to talk about those, those shortcuts. Uh, so I'm going to hit Shift 3 to go to my timeline. I'm going to hit Home so it goes to the beginning. In a previous episode, I introduced the JKL keys where you use J to rewind, K to stop, and L to forward. If you hit L once, it goes forward at 100%. If you hit L twice, It'll go to 150%. If you hit it three times, it will go 200% and so on. I think it maxes out around like 400% speed. So if I'm at the very beginning here and I don't want to watch the slight here, I'm going to hit home to the beginning. I'm going to hit L, 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 L. I'm going to hit it like four times here. One, two, three, four. And right there, I want to get the part where they yell action. So, so I'm going to hit L a bunch of times. And I think I hear it right there. So I'm going to hit J to rewind and J a couple times. Action. Right there's the action. So now I get, if I'm the director and director of photography sitting in a theater, I can watch this clip here. 
So uh, another thing here is when you want to navigate, and I don't want to get, I'm not going full screen. I'll demonstrate this all full screen in a minute is using your arrows up and down. Arrows up and down, the arrow up will jump to the edits to the left and the arrow down key on your on your keyboard will jump to the right. So right now I'm gonna hit arrow down. Arrow down, 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 down. Another thing that the assistant editor did was make sure that every shot that I'm looking at starts on the slate. If there was extra footage shot at the beginning, they just eliminated that when they uh, synced the footage. And once again, that's in my sync and merge tutorial. The very first frame that I'm looking at on each one of these clips is a slate with the accompanying scene number and take. So if I arrow down here, it will keep jumping through these. If I arrow up, it will jump back to the left. And you can see the playhead doing that right there. And one additional shortcut that's going to be helpful as left is your arrows left and right. And those, those the arrows left and right, an arrow left will go backwards one frame at a time. An arrow right will go through forwards one frame at a time. So if I hit this... Right now, I'm just hitting the, the arrow right key, and it's moving through one frame at a time. And if I do arrow left, it's going to go through one frame at a time. So if you're a, a director or a director of photography and you want to look, uh, look at a particular shot and just frame by frame to see what everything looks like, that's that's how you function that. Now, if you hold down shift arrow left and arrow right, it will jump through five frames at a time. So notice right here, just on my time code right there, it's on frame 9 minutes, 40 seconds, and 18 frames here. So if I hit my just my single arrow, it'll go, you'll notice, look at the timer here. It basically goes through one frame at a time. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. It's jumping through for one frame at a time. And the same when you go backwards, arrow left. Now, if you hold shift as a modifier, I'm holding down shift and I hit arrow right. Notice what it does. It jumps through five frames at a time. So now, it'll, now it's at 15, 20, and then goes back to this 24 frames per second. So it went to zero, 01. It updated the seconds and went to zero, 01 on the frames. 6, 11, 16 and so on. And if you arrow left while holding down shift, it will jump five frames back at a time. And then one last thing that you can do here is if you want to kind of shuttle through it at a little slower pace, you can just hold down your arrow right or hold down your arrow left. I'm just going to hold down the right arrow key. And it shuttles through about a 25% speed there. So, and same thing if I hold down the arrow backwards. It does, it'll shuttle about 25% speed backwards. Then one other thing that I can do here is I can uh, hold down shift while holding down left or right arrow and it will shuttle up to 50% speed. I'll first hold down shift and then, and then I'm going to press the left key and hold that down. And it will shuttle backwards at 50% speed. And if I hold down shift and then press the right arrow key holding that down, it will shuttle at 50% speed going forward. With all those shortcuts explained now, let's go full screen. I'm gonna hit Control tilde, and this is gonna go full screen, and I wanna go to the beginning of the timeline. So the shortcuts for going to the beginning of the timeline is home, and the shortcut for going to the end of the timeline is end. So right now I'm gonna hit home, and this all works when it's completely full screen here. Just hit home, and that jumped to the very beginning of the timeline. So now if I want to shuttle into this clip and watch it, let's say I know that take three is the good take on this. I can arrow down to two, to three, Let's see, they did three takes on that, and the third take was the best take. So that is take three right there. And now I can hit L to go forward. I'm gonna hit L, L. I'm gonna hit L like three or four times so it speeds up and gets to the point where the action starts. So L L L and K to stop. And let's what let's listen for action here. L. I'm hitting K to stop, by the way, and then L to play forward at 100 percent And action. There's action. And the shot starts, and we can watch the entire shot now. And then if the director says pause that and rewind to the person controlling the computer, you can hit K to stop, J to rewind. If you want to hurry up, go J, J. And it speeds up. And then the director says play it again, and then you say L. And action. And you let the clip play out. And usually if the director and director of photography are sitting there watching this, they're going to be having, they'll, they'll have the script supervisor sheets there as well, which have all the footage and all the explanation of the footage. So if they're saying, I want you to jump to scene uh, 1C. All you have to do now, we're on scene 1 here, so we have to jump down like three or four setups here. So I'm going to arrow down, there's 1A, there's 1A take 2, there's 1A take 3, 1A take 4, 1B1, 1B2, and 1C take 1. So there I am. And this one, it so happens that they all have, only have one take on this. So now I can do the same thing. I can either play it from the beginning. Mark it. Scene one, Charlie, take one. There you go. Or I can fast forward by hitting L a few times. 
And I just heard in fast forwards the the director saying, and action. Let's rewind that a little bit. And we can watch the entire shot. Very exciting watching somebody put on their slippers. There is another way to do this, by the way. If you want to be able to see the editing interface, if you want to see Premiere Pro while you're playing back and you want, want, want to see the full screen as well, you'll have to have a dedicated monitor. If you have two screens, like a projector that you're connected into, you're going to have Premiere Pro on your main computer screen. And a person can be controlling the footage from here. You can just grab the playhead and skim through it and find the clip that you want to while sending this full screen. The way you're going to do that is first of all, you're going to have to plug uh, an HDMI cable in and plug it into your projector that you're projecting to or a large television set that you're, that you're uh, playing back the dailies on. And you're going to go up to Premiere Pro. Uh, the preferences, the settings are actually on a PC are going to be found under edit and you'll find settings down here. But on the Mac, you go to Premiere Pro, go to settings, and you're going to go to playback. And playback will detect if you have extra monitors that are hooked up to your computer system. And right now I am working off my Macintosh laptop and next to it I have a large 4K monitor that's plugged in uh, to my laptop here. This monitor over here on the right is considered a shared desktop space with my laptop here. So I've got Premiere on this screen. If I drag it, I, I can decide to drag it over if I wish to, but I'm going to display this. Uh, but I want to display my footage on the big 4K monitor rather than showing it on my laptop full screen. So right now I'm going to go to my Premiere Pro settings. And if I was on the PC, once again, it would be under edit. And I'm going to go down to playback. And under playback, it will show all my settings here. And I do have my secondary monitor that's in UHD. So it's technically a 4K 130, 40 by 2160. I'm just going to check mark that and go down and hit OK. And now I've got Premiere Pro on my left hand monitor and I've got the full and I've got it playing back full screen on my monitor here on my secondary monitor here. And now you can hit shift three to jump to your timeline. And now you can start playing the footage and it will play full screen on your secondary device. So now whatever the way, whatever way I control this, I can arrow down, arrow up, whatever I want to do to get to the footage that I want to see. LLL to fast forward a little bit. And now when I press play. Action. I put the playing back full screen on my 4K monitor. And that gives you a couple of different ways of viewing your dailies at the end of a production day. Thank you, honey. No, thank you for watching Chin Fat, honey. Ugh. <sighs>